As the decade began, the Compromise of 1850 took center stage in the United States. It was a series of legislative measures aimed at addressing the growing tensions between the northern and southern states over the issue of slavery. The compromise crafted by Henry Clay was a delicate balance between the interests of the North and the South. It included provisions such as the admission of California as a free state, the enactment of a stricter fugitive slave law, and the organization of the Utah and New Mexico territories without specific restrictions on slavery. The Compromise of 1850 sought to maintain peace and stability in a nation on the brink of conflict. In 1851, the Treaty of Fort Laramie was signed between the United States government and various Native American tribes. The treaty aimed to bring about peace and define territories in the Great Plains region. It designated specific areas as Native American lands and allowed for the safe passage of settlers traveling westward. The treaty also established boundaries and promised annuity payments and other provisions to the tribes. However, the treaty was not without controversy, as subsequent events and conflicts would ultimately undermine its intended goals. The year 1852 marked a significant literary milestone with the publication of Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Eacher Stowe. This novel exposed the harsh realities of slavery and its impact on African Americans in the United States. Uncle Tom's Cabin became a bestseller and had a profound influence on public opinion, stirring debates and fueling the abolitionist movement. Stowe's vivid portrayal of the experience of enslaved individuals helped shed light on the moral implications of slavery and played a significant role in shaping the discourse surrounding this divisive issue. In 1853, Franklin Pierce was sworn in as the 14th President of the United States. Pierce, a Democrat, took office at a time when tensions over slavery were reaching a boiling point. His presidency was marked by attempts to maintain the delicate balance between the North and South. However, his policies, particularly the passage of the controversial Kansas-Nebraska Act, further polarized the nation and contributed to the deepening divide between pro-slavery and anti-slavery factions. The year 1854 witnessed the passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act, a significant piece of legislation that would have far-reaching consequences. The act, sponsored by Senator Stephen A. Douglas, sought to address the issue of westward expansion and the potential admission of new states into the Union. It proposed that the residents of these territories should decide for themselves whether to allow or prohibit slavery, thereby nullifying the Missouri Compromise of 1820. The act led to widespread conflict and violence in the Kansas Territory known as Bleeding Kansas, as pro-slavery and anti-slavery forces clashed in their efforts to influence the outcome. In 1855, the tensions and conflicts arising from the Kansas-Nebraska Act erupted in what became known as the Wakarusa War, a significant episode in the broader bleeding Kansas period. The conflict emerged as rival factions, pro-slavery and anti-slavery settlers, vied for control and influence in the Kansas Territory. The war highlighted the deep divisions within the nation and foreshadowed the violent struggles that would later lead to the American Civil War. In 1856, a shocking incident took place on the floor of the United States Senate. Democrat Congressman Preston Brooks viciously attacked Republican Senator Charles Sumner with a cane. The assault came after Sumner had delivered a passionate anti-slavery speech known as the Crime Against Kansas. The violent attack further exacerbated the tensions between the North and the South, highlighting the deep divisions over the issue of slavery that were tearing the nation apart. The year 1857 marked a pivotal moment in the history of the United States with the Supreme Court case of Dred Scott v. Sanford. Dred Scott, an enslaved African-American, had sued for his freedom, 
claiming that residing in a free state should grant him emancipation. However, the Supreme Court in a controversial decision ruled that Scott, as an enslaved person, was not a citizen and therefore had no right to sue. The decision further entrenched the institution of slavery and heightened the tensions between those who supported its expansion and those who sought its abolition. In 1858, the United States welcomed Minnesota as its 32nd state. This event marked an important milestone in the country's westward expansion. Minnesota's admission as a free state came at a time when the issue of slavery was a heated topic of debate. Its entry into the Union contributed to the delicate balance between the free and slave states and had implications for the growing political and social divisions that would ultimately lead to the American Civil War. In 1859, the nation was rocked by a daring rave led by abolitionist John Brown on Harper's Ferry, Virginia. Brown, along with a group of supporters, aimed to incite a slave rebellion by seizing a federal arsenal. The raid ultimately failed and Brown was captured and later executed. This event intensified the national discourse on slavery, further polarizing the North and South. Brown's actions and subsequent trials solidified his position as a martyr among abolitionists and deepened the fears and anxieties of pro-slavery advocates.